Okay, so what we're going to talk about in this video is how to hook up a directional control valve. In this, time, in this, uh, in this example, we're going to focus on the 4-2 valve that is solenoid controlled spring return, meaning it returns it to its original position. Now, when you're hooking up a directional control valve like this, it, there's a couple of very important things. One, you have to follow the schematic diagram which may or may not be attached to the direction control valve. Most of the time it is, it's attached right here and you can actually see that um, in here and I'll, that, that's over here on the screen. Uh, you can see what the actual schematic diagram of uh, the, this specific directional control valve is. Now, there's a couple of very important parts uh, to understanding hooking this up. Basically what we wanna focus on in this video is converting from the schematic diagram to the real world. Now, in the real world, we're almost never directly hooking up to the directional control valve. What we're actually hooking up to is something called a subplate, okay? And what this subplate does is it has ports that basically attach to the bottom of the directional control valve. And so the valve will sit on top of here and you will connect to the side ports here. The finished product actually ends up looking a lot like this most of the time out there in the industry where you'll see the subplate um, attached to the directional control valve. All right. So when we're converting from the schematic diagram to the real world, what we're concerned with is what are the ports on the subplate and what, val and what numbers or letters are associated with them. So for example, with this subplate here, you can see this is your B port right here, a, a port, I have to try to zoom in on that, okay? Your P port, A port, which I think I already showed you, and there's your T port, okay? Get it out of the shadow so you can see it. So when you're actually converting from the schematic diagram to the real world, you're actually, that's what you're worried about. So on our TII trainer here, what we have is the subplate that's already attached, okay? And so we would have to dive underneath here and see which port is which port. And since you can't see it, I'm gonna tell you. On this specific uh, size directional control valve with this subplate, this is your pressure, this is your A port, this is your B port, and this is your tank. Okay, so now let's walk through how we go about hooking this up and installing it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to hook um, from our pressure, from our pump. This is uh, pump pressure here coming to our pressure manifold, which will help distribute the pressure as needed. We're going to go from the pressure manifold. What I want to do is I want to take my pressure from the pressure manifold into the P port the pressure port of this directional control valve, okay? Now notice on your schematic diagram, your pressure port is always on the left hand, bottom left hand side. We're here, it's actually in the middle. And what we have to do is we have to come underneath and look at this subplate and look for that P. Out in the field, it can be really hard to see that. So you may have to get in there and scratch away some years and years of grime. So be ready for that out there in the field if you need to do it, okay? Then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna hook the tank port up to the reservoir. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, the T port on this one is right here. Now schematically, that's on your bottom right hand side. So we wanna connect from here right down to the reservoir, okay? We've made that simple connection from my tank port, which is here on the top, and there's a T right here that you can't see. That'll be etched in a lot like this right here, okay? If you can see it, let me get it out of the uh, way. This is a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. There you go. The T port right there, you can see that is locked in. So now let's go ahead and hook up our actuator ports, A and B. So my A port is on the bottom left hand side of this subplate, the way this is connected. So I want to come from here. All right. I'm going to run this down, in this case, to the bottom of my cylinder. And then from my B port here 
to the top. Now, depending on uh, how the spool's aligned in your uh, directional control valve, and depending on how uh, you want the cylinder to react, if you want it to be extending or retracting uh, when the button's activated or not activated, these may be switched, but in this case, this is how we're going to set this up. Our A port is going to our blind end, or our cap end port, and our B port is going to our rod end port. All right? So now this thing is ready to rock and roll. I have my power here, I have a momentary push button, which will activate this um, when it is uh, turned on. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. Now, what we have here in this circuit is in its normal position, pressure is flowing from the A port to the B port. And when I push the button, it retracts, meaning that now oil is flowing from the B port into the cap end and it's exiting through the A port back to tank. Now, if I don't want it to be like this, if I want this to be reversed, all I have to do is turn the system off and I can switch these. This is why following a schematic diagram is so very important. I can come here, put this in here. Now, I'm going to turn this on, and it should automatically retract. And this is now its normal position. Remember, this is its normal position because of the spring holding the spool into it. When I overcome that spring pressure with my solenoid, that will shift the spool oil will flow from your B port down to your cap end and return from your blind ear from your rod end through your A port back down to tank like it's showing you in the schematic diagram. So here we go. Alright. Now that's how we hook up a directional control valve on the TII trainer, but out in the field it's always going to be a little bit different depending on how you actually thread into the subplate, what connections you're making. These quick disconnects make it really, really nice to uh, get this all hooked up and going in the, uh, and so we don't have to sit here and unthread everything as we go along.